Hey friends, welcome back to P. Frank MD TV. I'm Dr. Paul Jared Frank, and it is a hot day here in New York City. It is peak summer season, and there is no better time to talk about our favorite topic in dermatology, the sun. It sounds simple, like there's nothing to talk about. It's terrible for you. UV radiation causes cancer, causes wrinkles. It should be very cut and dry, stay out of it, right? It's not that simple. The recommendations and the way that we protect ourselves can be very confusing to people. So without going too much into the science for you, I wanna give you a quick review, break it down so you can enjoy the outside. Because I'm an outdoor person, I love being outside, and um, I wanna make sure that you can also. So, sun. Well, we do know that um, sun contributes to a lot of bad things. It does cause cancer. Um, but we also know that the sun is the major contributor to all life forms on this planet. People also talk about vitamin D. By the way, you only need about five or 10 minutes of sunlight to get your vitamin D, so that is not an excuse to tan. We also know in medicine that um, it's used for immunotherapy, for things like eczema, psoriasis, other autoimmune diseases. So in my opinion, and there are some dermatologists that agree with me, sun isn't all bad. But just because that is so doesn't mean that we should all go with SPF 10 and you know sundial ourselves on a chaise lounge at 12 o'clock. So you do know how to, how to protect yourself and you do have to realize um, that there are significant risks to the sun exposure and it ages you. It doesn't make you look great over time. So you gotta protect yourself and we are all not created equal when it comes to skin coloring. People are of varying degrees of risks to skin cancer. And this is where some of the problems exist and what I disagree with a lot about the recommendations. You can't just tell every human on the planet to wear sun protective clothing, hide in the shade, wear SPF 100. It doesn't work like that. So I like to cater my recommendations to different people based on their history, their medical history, um, and you know the coloring of their skin. But in general, I like to tell people, you have to use about an SPF 30 minimum. That really gives a pretty decent uh, protection factor. Unfortunately, SPF means different things for different people. It has to do with the time you're allowed to stay outside before burning. But obviously it's different for someone with dark skin. And SPF only really refers to UVB radiation. So you need an SPF, but you need something that says broad spectrum. And you could use either a chemical sunscreen or a physical sunblock, what's called a mineral sunscreen. Now, there's controversy with chemical sunscreens as well. There's a lot of things in the media now that they are absorbed by the skin. They can um, be found in blood and breast milk. The Pediatric Association does not recommend them for infants. And that's because chemical sunscreens, what they do is they get absorbed into the skin and they convert UVB radiation and UVA radiation to heat. So there is some blood absorption in that, and it has been shown that, that it can affect um, hormonal modulation. There are some suggestions that it can be carcinogenic in itself. And if you do live in a sunny environment or you have a baby, you don't wanna be covering your whole body in that every day, several times a day. That is definitely the type of patient who lives in Miami or works outdoors where they're gonna really wanna consider a mineral-based sunscreen. Now, mineral-based sunscreens are great. They've been around the zinc oxide, the titanium dioxides. Um, and what they do is they actually kind of reflect the sunlight and they give the broadest spectrum. The problem is, and the reason why chemical sunscreens exist, is that mineral sunscreens can be cost ineffective, they can be expensive, they are, may not be as cosmetically elegant as the chemical sunscreens, which you know you could spray on and have oils and gels and all these variations of the theme. So it can be a little expensive to find the right micronized cosmetically elegant, um, cosmetically elegant mineral based sunscreen. We have one at P. Frank MD. Our UV shade is great for the face. It has a little tint in it. I tell a lot of my patients, you should use a cosmetically elegant mineral based sunscreen for the face and the decolletage and the hands. And you could, if you want, use chemical sunscreens like in a spray or a gel, as long as it says PF30 for the rest of the body. So, you know, once again, all people are not created equal. I think anyone that thinks that they could put on SPF 30 and lay at 12 noon outside in the sun trying to get color is kidding themselves. You know, I'll tell you my own recommendations. What I tend to do is I love the mornings and, and the later portions of the day. I enjoy the outdoors and the feeling of the sun on my skin, you know, between 8 and 10.30 from 3 to 5. I put on my sunscreen. I'm outdoors. I'm exercising, playing tennis, swimming, taking beach walks, 
Uh, and I really think this is the best way to get both the therapeutic benefits of outdoor sun exposure um, while protecting yourself from for some of the serious health hazards. Um, a lot of people get way too much sun in their earlier years. These are the people that need to for sure get skin checks regularly. And um, you just have to be smart people. Uh, you have to use the cumulative amount of sun exposure that you've gotten the whole life and take your recommendations from your dermatologist. Uh, again, all people aren't created equal when it comes to dermatology, but we have to be smart. And um, that's it, you know, there are people who complain about looking pasty or green during the winter, and we have answers for that too, because the technology of fake tanning or spray tanning um, has really come a long way. And we're gonna talk about that in the second part of this IGTV, so you better stay tuned.